What's up, my people and all of my people? You know who it is. It's me, the Nappy Hipster. And I literally, the reason why I'm making this video is because I just got done writing two songs. And I just want to know my creatives, my artists, my rappers, my artists in general, pop, all of that. How do y'all, what does y'all writing process look like? Because I would literally write a verse or write a course, go on about my life and, and avoid writing a song a week at a time and then come back and finish the whole song from just working with a verse or working with a course. And a lot of times I write, like the last verse I just wrote, this, this, that is what inspired this video. The last verse I just wrote, I wrapped it in my head. I didn't say, I didn't, mm, mm, mm. I just wrapped it in my head. And it's just like, like I can't write on the beat. <laughs> I can hear the beat and get my melody from the beat. But the, the whole time I'm actually writing words to the song, the beat is not playing. The only time a beat is playing is when I'm practicing what I just wrote onto the beat. And so I just want to know, is there any artists like that? Like, what is y'all writing process? How does that look for y'all? Because I think that shit is actually amazing as fuck how I write like that, bro. Like the shit. And it's like, it's easier to write in my head. Instead of me saying it, I feel like I be thinking too much about it. So me being able to think, like be in my thoughts to write my shit is, I feel like way more effective. Because I'm always in my head anyways. So I just feel like it's kind of like meditation. Like being able to you know what I'm saying? Like med meditating gives you time to think like all these thoughts that's going through your head at once. You kind of get to organize them. Like you get to focus on them. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like me being in silence and writing my music with the melody in my head, I get to organize my thoughts and my bars and shit. And I think that shit is really fucking cool. So I had to share that shit with y'all. I just want to know, you know what I'm saying? How this shit look for y'all. You are the runner. Why would I respect you? So I did it. <laughs> this is episode 29 of the Never Hippie Podcast. What's up with y'all, man? Last Sunday, we were talking about our goals. Do y'all have y'all three goals together? If y'all have y'all three goals together, do y'all have what it takes to achieve those goals? And the thing is, they ain't got to be big. When you put a lot of pressure on yourself, that's when you don't execute. Let it flow. Trust your talents. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got 10 goals. And what I realized, I've been doing this, what, for about three or four weeks now? So what I realized with me writing my goals and looking at my goals and at the end of the week seeing the goals I didn't accomplish is showing me how much I'm not doing. I feel like I'm doing a lot, but I'm not doing enough because what I think only only – did two things out of nine things on the list. What? Last year, I didn't, I mean, last week, I didn't make no content. Like, one of my goals is to make three posts go, have three posts go viral. How are you going to make that happen if you don't do any content? So that's why I'm saying, like, when y'all write your goals, write down how you can achieve them so you can have an idea of how to go about your goal. I want to work out every day. Yeah, it's easier fucking said than done. But how are you going to get yourself to do that? Okay, I'm going to wake up at this time. Or I'm going to get off of work and go straight to the gym. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, once you have the idea of how to go about your goal, it's easier to execute. You know what I'm saying? So that's really execution is what is what needs to be done to make sure that we're getting where we need to go and doing it consistently and effectively. So that's what we have to work on. Um I've did one thing off the list so far. I've did all, I'm almost completed another one. I just wrote two songs. If I write another one, I'm already be done and we just start. You know what I'm saying? Um, still a few things that I'm working on and it comes with consistency. No worries, no big deal. Because the more that I take the time to work towards those goals, the more that um well, like going back to the last episode, little progress is better than no progress. The closer you get to your goal, I feel like that's more of an excitement. Seeing that in two months of my song being dropped, 200 people listen to it. Thanks. Shout out to everybody. This is to Hennessy Eliminate. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for all the support. Thank y'all for all the love. I am trying. 
You know what I'm saying? I am very excited as an artist and seeing me put myself out there and seeing the results that I get makes me feel good, man. It makes me feel real good because that's what it helps me confirm like, yeah, consistency is all you need, bro. And that's the thing, like that's the thing that we struggle with. We struggle with consistency. We we know we have the skills, but we struggle with being consistent with our skills. If I, if I just wrote two songs in an hour, why am I not writing songs every day? One hour of my day, I'm pretty sure I'm spending two to three hours scrolling throughout the day. Instead of scrolling, oh, I love my locks, y'all. Yeah. I love them so much. I love them. Oh, my God. I am so fucking fine. I love them. I don't regret a fucking thing. I don't. I'm a real nigga. I enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the experience of having my hair to my back. But it's time for a change. The change was needed for health purposes. You know? So, and that's the thing, bro. We got we to gotta realize that we have to detach ourselves from things that no longer serve us. Completely. Not a little bit percent. All of the percents. We're needing to learn how to release. Hold on now. Be still. Peace. Be still. You know what I'm saying? We're needing to learn how to release things that no longer serve us. I, I swear to God, I was gonna go with life having one side longer than the other. I was I that was I was convinced that's what I was gonna do. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cutting it. Man, when I kept walking by my in my own house and I kept seeing pieces of locks on the floor, I'm like, bitch, why why what did it, wait, why why was it, why am I, why am I just not seeing this? Why am I not feeling these holes falling out? Red flag. So my shit not healthy. So I cut, man, let me, hold on. So I cut what? One of these? Damn, that's a real short one. What's this? About four inches? About four inches of my locks I cut. That ain't four inches. It's probably about two or three inches. They're always uneven though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, bro, I don't want to live life with an uneven head of hair. Yeah, I'm a rock star, but I got common sense too. And I just really liked that I interlocked them. And I was like, bro, I want these to look right, bro. And then it was it was just a lot going on. And so I just am trusting the process. The fuck? I know I'm a bad bitch. So that was never the worry with the reason why me not cutting them. I just like, you know what? I'm going to just wait till this side get long enough. And then I'm just going to cut it based off that. Nah, I literally, and the thing was, I did it Friday. I did it Friday before I got in the shower. I was, you know, like, I don't know if you're like me, but I spend time in the, sh uh, in the bathroom naked before I even get in the shower. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm brushing my teeth or, you know, just looking at myself, you know? I, I, I enjoy my body at all stages. So, you know, I um, was looking at myself. I think I was dancing. I was getting ready to go out. So maybe I was hyping myself up. Who knows? But I, um, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because you I, you couldn't really feel me the way you can feel me now. You know what I'm saying? You know it. But we got to get used to detaching from things that no longer serve us. People, things, hobbies. I've detached myself from weed. I get a little anxious. And because an example, and I'm going to give you all a sneak peek of that. That show was so great. Y'all seen the people feeling me, fucking with me. You feel me? So <laughs> you seen the people fucking with me, right? right? So, and I was excited. Like I felt good. I wasn't like, well, I know I almost lied. I was shaking and I asked my friend, I was like, how did I look up there before she sent me the video? I was like, how did I look up there? Because I was shaking, <laughs> like shaking, bitch. I was shaking. So. <laughs> Like, literally every move, like, I felt like my whole body was shaking and they could see it, but the people was fucking with me. So, you know, I just, I, I know I'm very attractive. Like, I use my sex appeal. I use my, I use my sex appeal for, like, that's fuel to my confidence. Like, me, I feel like I have your attention because I'm attractive. And me opening my mouth and saying some real ass shit or some cool ass shit makes it even better. So, I lead with my looks 
and then the talent rolls out. You know what I'm saying? And then you're already, you're already, I have your attention. You know what I'm saying? You're already attentive to what I have going on because damn, this nigga fine. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I led with it. Like the beasts was already checking me out. Shout out to Fluid Fridays and Crush the Poet. You know what I'm saying? For the opportunity and the love that was shown at the event. Because, yeah, I don't know why I be nervous, but I, and then when I really get nervous to the point I'm shaking in my boots, I be, uh, I be having to remember, bro, you that nigga. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? Or I have control over the shakes. Like I have control, like they're internal shakes. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really rocking the boat, you know what I'm saying? But inside, I'm, I'm shaking in that bitch. And I also... I also don't talk to people that I feel don't fuck with me or is not open-minded to fuck with me because I, I think I'm a cool-ass nigga. I feel like I'm a cool-ass nigga in many groups. I am very good. When I put on my application or in my resume, it says I adapt well to environments, meaning if I have to fuck with you, I'm going to figure out a way that's best for me to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to figure out your talents, figure out your skills, you know what I'm saying, how to deal with people so you can be where you want to be because I've learned that um we're dealing with people and certain people and different types of people who gives a fuck that you don't like them you're just trying to get somewhere you know what i'm saying so if i have to like you or fuck with you a certain way to get where i need to be so fucking be it you know what i'm saying so that's just really where i am in life as an entrepreneur there are spaces that i need to be in there are spaces that i don't want to be in but might put me in a better situation so that's why i started buying more dress clothes and shit like that because yeah i'm a hipster but sometimes I got to look the part to get the piece of the pie. And so that's really where I am in life. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning myself. I'm learning my skills. I'm learning my talents. I'm learning the entrepreneurial lifestyle and life and the ways of going about my business and holding myself, uh, you know, as because I am the forefront of my business. So when you see me, I'm a representation. Uh, I am nappy hippie. When you see me, I am nappy hippie. So that's why I always tell my peers or people that I hang around with. And that's why I'm really particular with who I hang around with. Because if you don't give a fuck, I don't really need to too much be around you. Because some situations that you don't want to give a fuck, you need to give a fuck. And that's just period. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need to be around people that's slouchy. You know what I'm saying? So I, you can call me shallow. Hmm. You can call me shallow. But it's just some things you just don't do. Some things you just need to do and it's not kissing ass you know because i've never been the type especially if somebody like this is in the room i you would i you i would never be the type you know what i'm saying but i know how to inter interact with you like example white people white people they love us they are in love with african americans black people period white people are in love with us now the way they show the love is ignorant and weird and fucked up but when you get over, when you get when you get to a certain point in life, you get over of how people act and look at why they act the way they act. And sometimes you just have to um, accept it. You know what I'm saying? Like not not just be a people pleaser. Just don't give like don't trip over shit you can't control. And that's why I, that's why I am at the point in my life. I don't trip over shit I can't control. You can't get a reaction out of me, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I know what I'm capable of doing. And if you don't know what you're capable of doing, that you're so pressed about me and what I am doing, I'm not the problem. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it's just like you're dealing with something and you're trying to project it onto me, but I'm not going to let you have it. I'm not going to let you win this battle. You know what I'm saying? And that's just really where I, where I am in a point of my life. And I feel like that's why I've gotten so far as, as I have in my job because... You can never get in, uh, get get uh, get get anything out of me. I know, like it's just, uh, guys, it really is just knowing you're that nigga. Once you master that, <laughs> once you have control over your emotions and your mind, everything comes to you. Everything that you want comes to you. Everything that you need comes to you. Every the type of love that you want, the type of support you want, comes to you when you focus on yourself and you control your mind and control your emotions. People leave, but people that leave are meant to be left. They, you, you receive the blessings. The, the, the fact that the blessings came to you, you are what was aligned to that blessing. The people that come to you that are good to you, you are aligned with those people. You didn't go chase those people. You didn't go to a day now. You didn't go to the, you, you so happily was walking in the store. 
seen a motherfucker. Y'all got to chocolate it up and start happening to me. Y'all have a connection romantically or platonically. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all have a connection where y'all share resources with each other. You know what I'm saying? You just got to do you. Um, that's just really where I am in life. That's why I don't have no sympathy for nobody and not in a harsh way. But if you can't help yourself, I don't have time to slow down and try to help you. It was fun trying. It was. You know what I'm saying? Very cool experience. But a nigga gets drained because I have shit that I want to do and I'm actually trying to do. So hanging out with somebody that's like, I want to do this, I want to do that, but don't be doing shit. That used to be me. And I'm tired of attracting people that was like me. And that's the thing. A lot of things that I didn't like in women, I was it was me. <laughs> I didn't like me. <laughs> like when I dwelled on some shit, and I was like, the women that I, I stopped fucking with, you know, we fell off. I always would think about things I didn't like about them. And a lot of it was the same things. And the finger comes back to me. Okay. So it's just like a self-reflection is a motherfucker. When you start to self-reflecting and being self-aware, you start loving yourself. You control your emotions because you, you figure out why you act the way you act or react to things that you react to the way you do. Once you master those things, bro. You the boss. You you are the god, and nobody can fucking stop you, bro. And and that's the thing. Like I hate when I don't I don't think I have to carry a gun. I don't I don't think I need. I ain't, I ain't never. I'm watching. I'm, I have common sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ignorant to violence and things that can happen to me, but I'm never worried. I mean, that's the thing. Like I remember a bitch said, "You're not gonna get a gun. What if a nigga tries to?" The fact that you thought a nigga would try us. That was a red flag. <laughs> I'm that nigga. Listen, I, I talk bad to the baddest of baddest. The baddest of baddest of niggas. They're not going to touch me, bro. A real nigga got common sense like, damn, I'm being a whole ass nigga and walk the fuck away. Only the weird demon ass niggas, they will be the ones to try to bust you or something. I don't give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, if it's my time to die, it's my time to die. But I'm not going, I'm not going because over a gun, I'm going to stand down because a nigga trying to bitch me. No, and it's not even my ego. Like, a nigga, when I'm first, it was, damn, I think it was like my first month, second month, third month. I don't remember. It was soon. It was early into my move to Dallas. I was, I don't even remember where I was at. I think I was in Carrollton. I was with my homeboy. Both niggas. So I wasn't, I, I wasn't worried off that alone. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh we went out to a club. It was called Legends. Never gonna get never not gonna forget about it. We were the youngest niggas in there. Uh, older bitches chosen. I chose a bitch that had a husband. She told me, and I was like, but do you care? Because that, <laughs> that's what it leads down to. Do you care that you got a nigga? That's not my responsibility. So do you care that you have a man? Oh, okay. So then she danced on me, whoop, 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 whoop. And then, I, you know, we, we dance, we talk, walk away. I'm not going to be in the bitch face. That's not why we're here. I'm here to have fun. I'm not here to... I'm not here for all that. I just want to... You know, dance up on me, chop it up with you, then go by my business. So I went by my business. We ended up walking out the club, you know, because the club, we all in the single file line walking out the club for some reason. And so I ended up, you know, walking out the same time with Shorty. So I'm chopping it up with Shorty. Woo, woo, woo. And the nigga, I can't remember because it's not that important. But the nigga said something. And I was like, hey, bro, like, what's, what's your issue? Like, what's the issue? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that you just the nigga's friend. You, you a bitch. You a runner. Because this nigga's wife is at the club and he told you to watch her at the club. He didn't give a fuck about his wife enough to go to the club with him. So he had a nigga go to the club with his bitch. You are the runner. Why would I respect you? So I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't. And so he was just talking shit. And I'm like, bro, just go about your like what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you gaining from this? Cause I'm talking to another nigga's bitch and you're defending like what? What? Yeah, we coming out the club. You wanna be a man? I'll show you a man and he put out his gun. <laughs> I'm drunk as fuck. Mind you, me and my nigga, some Jamaican nigga was buying us fucking Hennessy shots. I don't fucking know. But so I'm fucked up. <laughs> so, so I literally stopped. I'm walking next to the woman. I literally stopped and I said, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you making a scene? Like, that's literally what I said. I'm drunk as fuck. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Why are you making a scene right now? I'll show you a man. You want to be a man? 
So then some random nigga grabbed him and I kept walking. And he he go then he started to get into it with a nigga. It was I don't he was I don't know. He had a bad night. I don't know. But it's just I don't even know the fucking point of that story. I lost it. I oh, I ain't never scared. <laughs> I ain't never scared because at the end of the day, when that uh timer runs out, I don't have control over that. It's gonna happen. So I'm not about to be, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Like he literally pulled it out and I'm like, bro, like I was confused. We can have an argument, but why did it get to the point that I have to die? And it's a bitch that's not even yours. It's insane. It's insane, y'all. The bitch wasn't even his. He was gonna kill me over a ne- Are you fucking this nigga? <laughs> I don't know if you fucking her. I don't fucking know. I don't know. But what? No, it's never that deep. Over a bitch. I ain't gonna kill a nigga. I'm not gonna ever address a nigga ever when it comes to my bitch anyway. Ever. You addressed it another. You addressed it somebody for another nigga's bitch. You are pathetic. That's you are a runner, sir. Stay in your place and run along. <laughs> hey, man, listen, now all I'm saying is it's my aura. It's my, I don't think I'm a tough guy. I know God is within me. Whenever it's time for me to go, I'm gone. So it's, I'm never going to be like, oh, my God, please stop. No, nigga, if it's time, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. I can't control it, fam. I can't control that. 56 got shot nine times. He didn't go. And he'll still talk crazy to your ass. <laughs> no, spirit of fear. And look how godly this nigga is. Not in a worshiping way, but he's a very powerful being that he says what the fuck he has to say and he's still saying it. He's a very powerful person where he's very successful. Where he, he owns everything that he does. <laughs> like he does, he owns a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? He's a very powerful person. So it's just like, once you tap into yourself, nobody or nothing can stop you. That's the goal. It's to be unstoppable. I'm immortal. <laughs> if I leave this bitch, I impacted lives, and I will live forever. I was going to show you my tattoo, but I don't know if my other leg get up that high. And I'm not going to embarrass myself for a YouTube video. But y'all, I told y'all I was going to drop every Wednesday and Sunday. So here we are. Start of something very beautiful. Have your goals down. And write three to nine, three to ten goals. I write nine every, every week. But write three to ten, uh, three to ten goals. And put them on your fridge. Put them on somewhere you're always visiting. And so you can remember, okay, I need to I need to address this. I need to work on this. I need to, you know, tap into this. And eventually you're going to start checking off. I literally went three weeks and did and I, it's been, I think it's th- week three or four. And four, it's week four. And um, I have not completed all of my goals in a week. And so that's my goal. I did one thing. And if I finish another time, I'm going to be a second one. Write down your goals. Put them somewhere where you're visiting often. If you're in the kitchen often, I put mine on my refrigerator. So if you're in the kitchen often, put them on the refrigerator. Uh, in the bathroom, I put them on your mirror. So when you're brushing your teeth, I hope you're brushing your teeth every day. I'm pretty sure we're adults, so we're doing that. So uh, put it on your mirror in, in the bathroom. If you have a full body mirror, I keep pointing at shit in my house. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you have a mirror in your room, the mirror, put it on it so you can see. I have a, a, race, a race board erasable board a whiteboard i have a whiteboard and put it on there man i change them up every week and what i do is i keep the one that i haven't achieved and i keep it on there and then i just add the ones that i i achieved i replace and then it's going to become a habit where we're achieving our goals every week and we make a shit happen don't that sound good and we're going to feel good too have a good week, y'all. Peace. It wasn't that baby. It wasn't that baby shit. It wasn't that baby. It wasn't that baby shit. It wasn't that baby.